All right, hello everyone. My name is Kate Fraunheim and I will be the last person talking about spiders today. So if you're getting <laughs> sick of hearing about spider experiments, you're almost done. Um, and I'm gonna be focusing on meatballs, which is a hunting technique that wolf spiders do, um, where they grab a bunch of flies and lump them all together into a ball. All right, so I wanna talk um, first about why we need to study spiders and why this study is important. Spiders are instrumental for the food web. They're one of the main predators of insects, um, and so they're needed to keep the insect population in check and ensure that insects do not overconsume plants. And spiders are also food for other animals, such as birds. Um, and then this topic specifically is also important for other foraging experiments with wolf, wolf spiders, um, because in these experiments, you put like a spider into an arena with a bunch of flies and you're making assumptions about how many flies that spider can fit in its meatball. So it's important to um, study this meatball topic and learn more about their hunting behaviors. It's also just a fascinating behavior that not many organisms do. So it's exciting to learn about this um, very unique spider behavior. And then spiders are also important in general because they consume household pests. Now you know you probably hear this a lot and you think, do they actually though? And yesterday I was practicing this presentation um, and I was in, in an Airbnb that has a lot of ants in it and I saw a spider eat one of the ants. So it's true, <laughs> they do eat household pests. All right, so um, I wanna talk a little bit about how wolf spiders forage. They're ground hunters, which means they don't use webs to hunt, and instead they use hide and ambush techniques on the ground to catch their prey. And they'll typically either use their legs or pedipalps to grab their prey. And you can see in this image, a pedipalp is um, two appendages by the mouth of the spider that they'll use to help hunt. Um, and then this sequence shows like a spider lunging for and grabbing a fly with its legs. And then when they hunt, spiders will grab a bunch of flies and lump them together into a meatball instead of grabbing one fly, eating that fly, and then going on to grab and eat a different fly. And so this allows them to eat a bunch of prey items at once. And then I just wanted to have a better picture of the meatball um, so you can just see like that's what it looks like and you can see the spider is holding it with its mouth and pedipalps and they can actually get upwards of 20 flies into this meatball so they can collect a lot of prey items. The point of this study was to figure out what affects the number of flies that a wolf spider can collect into its meatball. Um, and so we predicted that the two main factors that would influence this are the size of the spider and the number of days that that spider has been starved for. So we thought that a larger spider would have more flies in its meatball because it'd physically be able to hold more flies at once. And then we also predicted that a spider that's been starved for a longer period of time would have more flies because it would be hungrier and more motivated to hunt. Um, so to test these predictions, we collected 16 mature females from the wolf spider species Rabidosa rabida, and they were all collected during the day. The reason we only used females is because you can't really compare the foraging between males and females because mature males will typically spend more time looking for a mate than they will looking for food. Um, and then we starved eight of the spiders for seven days and eight for one day. And we took masses um, and then took pictures of the spiders and used an ImageJ software to measure size. So this picture shows the ImageJ software. As you can see, the spider has two body segments. The one with the eyes is called the prosoma, and the other one is called the abdomen. And we measured the width of both, but we ended up using the width of the prosoma as the measurement for size, because mass and abdomen width can actually be affected by how many flies the spider has consumed. So as a spider eats more flies, its abdomen will actually be wider. So that's not really um, a good measurement of how big the spider actually is. All right, so we um, completed all of the experiments on the same day in four different groups because we had one person observing one spider and we only had four people doing observations, so we had to split the 16 spiders into four groups. All of the trials were done during the daytime because since we collected the spiders during the daytime, um, when we're collecting them, that's when they're active, so that's when they're foraging in the wild, so we want the trials to be done at the same time as when they will be foraging. And then during the experiments, the spiders were placed in an arena with 30 flies. 
um, and we watched their behavior for 30 minutes. So this shows the setup. Um, so we were just sitting here observing these spiders and making note of their behavior. Um, we completed what are called ethograms, which is a way to track animal behavior, where you mark the behavior at a specific time. And so we were spe making specific notes of when they caught and dropped flies, but also various other behavior. We found that lots of the spiders spent some time spinning in circles, so we made note of when they did that, <laughs> um, and when they were walking around versus just sitting in one place. And these flies were alive, right? Yes, yeah, the flies were alive. Um, and they, the flies um, were flightless, and so they weren't able to get out of the arena. The picture that I just showed, I can go back to it. Um, this is not like from the actual experiment. This just shows the setup. So this one like kind of has some debris in it and stuff, but the actual experimental ones were just solely alive flies. So how did you make them so they couldn't fly? You took all the wings yeah, off? Yeah, we personally just picked every single wing off of all of the flies. No, it's a genetic thing. We just ordered flightless flies. People did ask a lot about that at neighbor nights, though, if we were going through and getting all the wings <laughs> off the flies. Thankfully, we did not have to do that. All right, so to analyze the data, we put it all in a spreadsheet in Excel. Um, and so this picture actually shows the first 20 seconds of the ethogram. And as you can see, there are different letters that correspond to various behaviors. And not every second will have something, but every time the um, spider caught or dropped a fly, that's noted on there. Um, and then I went through and figured out the maximum number of flies that each spider had in its meatball. One spider had to be left out because it dropped part of its meatball early on, and so it was impossible to determine the maximum number that it had at the end of the 30-minute time period. Um, and then we made graphs based on this data in Excel and R. So for the size of the spider versus the number of flies in the meatball, you can see the graph here. And there's a slight inverse relationship between size of the spider, which is represented by persoma width, and the maximum number of flies in the spider's meatball. However, this was not significant based on um, the R squared and P values. So an R squared value represents how close the points are to the line of best fit. So um, a value of one would mean that all of the points are exactly on that line. And as it goes closer to zero, the points will be further away. So as you can see, a value of 0.2 is pretty low, and the points are not very close to that line of best fit. And then a p-value represents the probability that your results are just random. And so if you have a value of 0.05 or lower, that will represent significant results because that means that there's a 5% chance that your results are random or a 95% chance that they're not random and then that there is a significant relationship there. So as you can see, our value is higher than 0.05, so this was not significant. And then this box plot shows the number of days starved versus the flies in the meatball. So the dark line in the center for one and seven represents the median for both of those um, days starved for those spiders. And then the gray boxes represent 50% of the data. And since those boxes are overlapping, you can automatically tell that that data is not gonna be significant. And you can also tell that by looking at the R squared and P values. So although um, the spiders that were starved for seven days had a slightly higher number of flies in their meatball, this was not significant and it could have just been a random result. All right, so based on our experiment, we did not find um, that size or starvation influenced the number of flies in a spider's meatball. So there could be a different factor that we didn't account for in this study that could be influencing that. Um, and it also could be that our results were found to be not significant because of the small sample size. So it would be important to retest this with a higher sample size and see if you found significant results. Um, and then I'd like to thank my funding sources. Um, and does anyone have any questions? Okay, so um, you had the same density of spiders in all, of flies yes. in all of them. Mm -hmm. And did the spiders, like, you know, they grab a fly, grab another fly, they've got a meatball, sometimes they drop it, start creating a new meatball. Is that kind of what happened? Or did they just tend to make one meatball? Yeah, the so they typically made only one meatball. Usually whenever they drop the meatball, they would pick it up as soon as they could. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I think there are only a few instances where they dropped it and just let that meatball, like, go for the rest of the time. So, so why would they eat that meatball? 
They were just kind of eating it while they were collecting other flies. Typically, since they're hiding am like ambush predators, they'll just be sitting and waiting for the flies to come to them. And so they'll kind of just be eating while they're waiting to oh. catch new flies. It's like the hungry guy at the picnic, right? Who is like putting food on his plate, but also eating, eating it at, at the, the same, same time. time. Yes, exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. How do they immobilize them? Like if they drop them to keep them from getting away, are they injecting mm -hmm. them with venom or something? Or Yeah, so they actually just kind of smash them into the meatball. And we did find that there were times that live flies would just kind of crawl out of that meatball and get away. So they're not really like killing the fly when they put it in the meatball necessarily. And then they're eating the whole thing, like they're yeah, so like sucking juice out. Yeah, they like suck they, it out. Mm -hmm. When I think of spiders, that's what I think. The, the yeah, no, that's juice. exactly right. They don't like consume it. They're sucking like the juice out of the okay. fly. Mm -hmm. So the the one graph there, the the point zero eight is actually not too bad. I mean, mm -hmm. the, yeah, you know, we always say point zero five, but you know, I would be tempted to say, well, it's significant at the point point one level or something. If you think that there's a reason that that makes sense. So, I mean, that, that doesn't look too, too, too bad there. Yeah, this is kind of the inverse of what we were expecting. So, um, this graph would show that, like, the larger spiders would have fewer flies. So, yeah, it could be that that is, like, pretty significant. We could try and retest that with a higher sample size and see if we got the same results. Did you ever look into, like, why they were spinning? Is that, like, them putting, like, webs around, spinning webs around the, the flies in the meatball or um, they just start going crazy? <laughs> That's a good question, yeah. Usually when they were spinning, they were also adjusting the meatball, so kind of mm -hmm. trying to like jam flies back into it if they were escaping. Um, they also could have just been scouting like yeah. the flies in the arena and like maybe seeing if there's any escape routes available. Yeah, and one thing that I saw they were doing is with their meatball, like on the the filter paper on the bottom of the arena, they were just like rolling the ball on the paper. So that was kind of like helping to pull the ball together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is really interesting, kind of in a broader context with predators and prey and like the size ratio between the prey and the predator. You know, mm -hmm. like a plankton feeder is obviously feeding on millions of prey at the same meatball, making a meatball can't ingest it. Or a spider can't ingest it, obviously. But then it'd be cool to do this with different sized prey to kind yeah. of see how that affects simultaneous handling mm -hmm. and killing. Yeah, and simultaneous handling is like the scientific term for a meatball. <laughs> for those of you who not know. Cool. Yeah, that would be fascinating because they probably do not do it with all of their prey items. We, like cockroach. Yeah, we fed one of them a cockroach and like I doubt they would be able to <laughs> lump multiple cockroaches together. So it's probably dependent on the prey item that they're hunting. Yeah, mm -hmm. did you still have a question? Um, yeah, I might have missed this, but how long do you, they usually keep one meatball? Um, so at the end of the 30 minute time period, they would typically still have the same meatball. Um, so longer than 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, we, we can maybe do some more studies over a longer time period, but since we were sitting there and manually observing it and we were doing four different trials, like that's a lot of time to just be sitting and looking at one arena. I think I've seen one have one for, like, for a day. So, like one, you know, we, we check on these things every day and put them in different foraging trials. And one time I saw a spider that still had a meatball in its putty pot uh, a day after. I've seen them go back and pick them up like a day later. Yeah, too. Mm -hmm. yeah so they could also depend on what this guy did. We don't really, we don't know. So did you let all of them go in this room or? It's a party favorite for everyone. Cool, all right, thanks Kate.